Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, Guile here and welcome back to the Forged Alliance Forever promotional series. I hope you all had a fantastic Christmas and New Year and Santa brought you everything that you deserved. I uh, I got everything I deserved but then I didn't really feel like I deserved very much so okay, sera. Christmas is more about the kids anyway, isn't it? Uh, anyway, uh, what have we got to welcome in the new year for all you wonderful, wonderful people? Well, the astute of you out there will automatically recognise Saturn's. Da, da, da. And it's going to be custom 4v4 featuring a couple of low order pros, one on each team. But otherwise, it's an average Joe affair. Those masters of mediocrity returning once again to demonstrate why they needed the ending of the sixth sense explained to them. We'll call this team one up here at the top. This team two down here at the bottom. Give them some time, allow them to gate in, make our introductions. We'll call rearguard their position over here more than a Jedi, which is quite the ostentatious name. We'll see if he lives up to it as the game progresses. Going Fecal Brown, interesting decision, but going Aeon as an air player, always a good decision. Opening first land. Over at the cliffs for team one in lurid green. We've got Printer opening first land, going second air, and going UEF, handling the causeway today, going Cybrin, which is always interesting. Uh, it's Ryan199991. Apologies if I butchered that number. I know some people like it said in certain ways, but uh, it's my channel, so deal with it. Uh, he is going Cybrin, as we said, opening first land in Halliborange Orange. And last but not least for Team 1, over at the beach in Ferrari Red, it's another UEF. It's Ergo Proxy. He's going first air, so perhaps we're going to see uh, early bomber play or maybe some early side island denial. We'll keep an eye on that as the game progresses. Let's make our introductions for Team 2 now, starting with the rearguard air position. Also going Aeon, how terribly sensible, it's Orond. He's going electric blue today, opening first land. Over at the cliffs for Team 2. In combat green, we've got Gabba going Cybrin, opening first air. Going to try and make sure he bags that side island as soon as possible. Handling the causeway today, our first and only Seraphim. It's Crack Barry. There he is, heading off towards the center of the map in Mellow Yellow, opening first land. And last but not least, it's Carlitos over at the beach. A firm, faff favorite from the days of old, the days of yore and yonder year, back when GPG was a thing and I had hair. There he goes, still rocking the game. You love to see it. Anyway, he's going Aeon as well, opening first land. So racial makeups, that's uh, two UEF, a Cybrin, and an Aeon there for Team 1. And two Aeon, a Cybrin, and Seraphim there for Team 2. Game quality at 93% might confuse some of you because you'll see two identical ratings down here in the averages. But these are averages, and they're averages of rounded up numbers. So the actual averages, this is a lie, basically. The actual averages will be off enough to make a game balance of 93%. All very simple, but actually we're pretty happy with that, so we won't spend too much time talking about it. The two pros, or ringers if you will, people to watch out for today are Gabba handling the cliffs for Team 2. He's at 1600, and over here at for Team 1, also at the cliffs, it's Printer. So they're both facing off against Joes, but the gulf isn't huge, let's be honest. There's only a few hundred ranking points between these guys, so it shouldn't impact the game too much. But still, teams would love to take those two guys out, I am sure. Alrighty, so what's been happening? Well, I've been making my introductions. Well, we have our first plane coming out of Ergo. It is an interceptor and it is a scout. And it looks like it's heading over to the top pond side island over here. And there's already a transport loaded up, ready to move in that direction. So will he get shot down? That's one interceptor, though. Even if he spots it early, it'll take a while to chew through those hit points, but it will dissuade him from doing what people love to do on this map, which is drop an engineer off here and then come in and burrow in like a tick over at the northern cliffs on this side of things. How many engineers has he got on board to make such a, an eventuality a thing? Well, he has got four, so perfectly capable of dropping one or two off over here and doing that. However, he's been spotted. Interceptor fires the first couple of opening rounds. He drops one off over here. Is he going to drop another one off up at the back? Yes, he is, but there's no way he's getting anywhere else saucy with those last two remaining NGs. So he's, yeah, he's just going to drop them off on the other side of the island. How terribly sensible. I agree with you, sir. Probably won't make it out alive with that skyhook. Indeed, it won't. Plummeting into the water to create a nice artificial reef. It's all very sensible and ecological in its approach so we have got that other play that i was just talking about happening in the bottom pond however carlitos did not send an early interceptor over here or if it did it got shot down nice and quick 
by all of these planes buzzing around here for Printer, who dropped off two engineers over here, but is now moving in with not just two engineers, but also two labs on board. So you can do a little bit of partially loaded ghetto gunship action, perhaps look to take out these engineers and clear the area while he uh, sets up shop and creates some headaches for Carlitos, who's about to make landfall on the causeway to assist Barry. And boy, does Barry need it, because he is in the doldrums over here, down to 7,000 hit points already. Ergo Proxy almost on full health, Ryan on full health. So Team 2 at a little bit of disadvantage in the centre here, but it's all about trying to scoop as much mass as is humanly possible. And in fact, you know what? I'm going to go to split screen just to keep an eye on the causeway and also what's going on down here because those two engineers did successfully make landfall. They are on the ground and working on that first land factory. And over here, that transport is moving out with those other two labs, perhaps looking to go and find a couple of random engineers about the place. They even have their escort detail flying cover for them. Transport has been locked onto by a hostile interceptor, so he drops the labs off onto the ground. They blast poor old Bernard there, engineer in the tree line, just minding his own business. And he did manage to kill off whatever engineers were working in this area also. And this first land factory pumping out yet more labs as we speak. So Barry forced off the center line with his comm, but most of the mass has been scooped now. Who fared better, I wonder? The answer on paper is team one fared slightly better they're up about 1k mass in terms of reclaim so nothing to write home about but i'll mention it anyway and otherwise in terms of eco generation team one are also up by somewhere between four to six to seven mass per tick they're up overall about 2k in terms of total mass accrued so there we have it nothing inbound on the ground from carlitos to challenge this position and he probably wants to get on it soon because we've got a lot of land factories queued up here. Although there's intermittent pausing going on with the build orders for these engineers. Not sure exactly why that's clicking on and off like that. Barry looking very peaky indeed, down to 3,700. And now Carlitos taking a battering. And this is up against Proxy or Ergo Proxy, who is looking very healthy on the green. And Ryan, who's at about half health. And now Barry ill-advisedly strolling forward right into this horde of orange spam. Well, there's two comms almost either side of him. And I don't think he's getting out of this one alive, chaps and chapettes. Down below a thousand hit points now. And with no escape plan in place, he is going down. Assuming they don't back off for no real reason. There's no reason why they should. Boom! Seven minutes and ten seconds, our first ejection. It's Crack Barry. He probably should have stuck with weed. It's much safer. Joke. Kids, stay off all drugs. It will rot your brain. Anyway, you can go back to single screen. And Team 2 find themselves down a man just seven minutes in. That is less than ideal. However, it looks like Carlitos has finally reacted to the infestation down here. Engineers have been slaughtered. And uh, although that is working on new engineers currently, there's no real commitment to try and hold on to this now. Land Factory surely going to go down. And the last lab that was causing a nuisance of itself over here has been obliterated. Look at him face down in the dirt. It's like me on a Friday night. Sounds like I drink a lot. That's actually two pints deep. I'm very slender. Right. Where are we now? Eight minutes in. Eco, 1-9 or 185 versus 215 in favor of Team 2 now. So that's swapped. But Team 2 are down 4K overall. So they've got a bit of catch-up work to do. And not only that, there's a slight power vacuum on the causeway now. Ergo Proxy and Ryan show no signs of slowing down, wanting to continue to press their advantage. Carlitos, who was heading back to his main base with his comm, now tentatively strolling back to the causeway with his commander. He's got about 4,000 hit points on the clock, so he needs to be very careful lest he end up the way his teammate did. And uh, in order to rectify that hit point situation, he's going to get himself a T2 upgrade. 4,200 hit points left on the clock, as we've said. That will restore a good old chunk, probably bring him up to about somewhere between six or 7,000, I should think. 
But he's got a while to go on that. That is precariously placed, though. He's still well out of the water. If any land units show up en masse from Team 1, he could force a cancel there, especially if it's a, a bunch of light artillery. But uh, he wants to stay close so he can stop this push. You see a lot of T1 spam moving up to join these two commanders. And what's going on over here? Solid air incursion underway from Gabba. We've got T1 Jester gunships. We've got T1 bombers. We've also got a lovely little escort detail to give them some protection on their way in. Look at that. Lots of potential isolated, vulnerable T1 mexes that they can go a killing and a shooting. I'll go proxy feeling the wrath of these gunships at the moment. Team 1 still ahead by, well, comfortably ahead at the moment, by about 12 mass per tick. Is that, however, about to change as these gunships move into the main base now for more than a Jedi? He's got no anti-air to speak of. He's going straight after the T2 engineers. They're working on a shield gen. I like the fact that he's going after the engineers, but they mustn't allow this shield gen to go online. Defending interceptor shows up, starts working on shooting down the gunships, but the escort detail is far too powerful. Oh, that is a real shame. He switches up to the shield gen, but too late. Takes it down to about two-thirds of its base health. Just as the shield pings online, he could have had all of those engineers and started to work on those T2 reactors, which really would have slowed Jedi down. But uh, Kesara was not to be. Uh... 324 to 251. Team 1 with the massive bump. That must be reclaim related. Surely. Surely. That's a huge bump in in income for Team 1's team. Seems to be falling off slightly now. But they're up some 50 mass. Not too shabby. Second upgrade on the way for Ryan on his comm. He's already got stealth on board that Cybran chassis. Is Ergo Proxy going to stick around and assist with that? He says no. You've got your own income. Deal with that. Carlitos completed T2 Engineering Suite. Brought him up to 8,000 hit points. And now he's working on sensors. That completes very fast indeed. Of course, Carlitos now sitting on two base after the annihilation of his teammate, Barry. He inherited... All of that eco and responsibility for guarding the causeway. Where are we in terms of naval yard numbers? So we've got six factories in place for Carlitos in that bottom pond. And we've got seven naval facts in place on the other side of the field belonging to printer but of course, a lot more potential income available for Carlitos. Now he's getting to work on some defences. Maybe he can point defence creep across the bottleneck over here. Sealing the escape route for Ergo and Ryan who really have to be aware of the threat here. Don't want to get sandwiched in between inbound T1 spam and a firebase. Only real exit is up through this aperture, this avenue over here. So they'll have to take some fire. Unless, of course, the inbound T1 spam distract those point defense. Ogo Proxy's got the right idea. I think he says, forget this. I am out of here. Ryan, on the other hand, emboldened by his stealth, but cancelled the second upgrade. Still just rocking the one. Still content for the time being, at least, to stomp around in here. Are we finally seeing a move out, though? Yes, we are. And Ergo makes it safely into the water around that cliff edge. That was the right time to get out of there. Carlitos has almost fully repped back up. And now is going to have some point defense on his side for guarding the causeway. There's no point trying to hold this. What have we got here? We've got a couple of mexes at best. Quite frankly, my dear, not worth the risk. So, where is Proxy headed now? Proxy and Ryan. 
moving up in this direction. Ryan moving back to base. Proxy looking to move back to his. But uh, yeah, there's some subs there. Probably shouldn't have moved that deep. Well, there was potential threats in the water. I guess he thought he was safe because he had a decent amount of his own vessels. But he, he's, this might be close, you know. He's down to 5,000 hit points. And now we've got frigate surface vessels for him to worry about when he does get out onto land. Admittedly, they don't do an awful lot of damage. But he's not going to have an awful lot of hit points by the time he makes landfall. Sub 3,000 now into the red. Frigates open up on him. Sub 1500. This is going to be very close or not even close. I think he's going to go down. Ergo Proxy with a cataclysmic miscalculation. And not only that, Ryan is still sitting in the area also. So Gabba manages to level the field at almost the 15 minute mark. There we go. Well, fortunately, combination of the explosion and the uh, inbound vessels from what was Proxy's naval yards up here managed to clear the area. But wow, that's a lovely little pick from Gabba. Showing you just why those few hundred hit points can really make a difference. A little bit of naval pressure now being applied by Carlitos. This is all subplay over here in the northeast of the bottom pond. A lot of vessels down here, but quite a few of them are frigates. quite the numbers of subs he needs to affect major damage there but he'll give as good as he gets Carlitos so Gabba pulling in almost 200 mass now Arond rearguard air player for team 2 also playing at about 106 and Carlitos sitting on two base, hasn't had time to think, putting in a very paltry 109 mass per tick. So, chap on two base, short stacking, he needs to rectify that ASAP. Get macroing as soon as humanly possible. More than the Jedi keeping up with the Rond, he's on 195. Printer pulling in 166. And Ryan pulling in 168. What does that translate to? Well, it translates to a decent little lead of about 30 mass for Team 1. Overall, they're up about 20k. Causeway action continues. And this time, there's some T2 presence in play as Ryan moves up with some mobile missile launchers. No match for droid Dakars, though. They sort of do look droid Dakari, don't they, the Oblivion turrets? That wasn't scripted. It just suddenly occurred to me. A bunch of people in the comments. Yeah, no, heck, it wasn't scripted. It was pointless comment, Garth. <laughs> I, don't I don't know. NG drop ready. So, a forward naval yard outpost going up here for Gabba. I wonder if he's called Gabba because he likes Gabba. And if you don't know what Gabba is, your ears will thank you. After this game is over, look up Gabba dance music. <laughs> I think that's how you spell it. I'm not even sure. It might be Gabba, like G A W B A. However you spell it, though, it's not good. Isolated destroyer does make it all the way to the cliff base, but has found himself well and truly under pressure. Torpedo boats and frigates swarm it and send it to the bottom of the ocean. RAS upgrade on the way for Gabba. Moving pretty swiftly as it turns out. 
I'm going to do a very quick ASF count to see who has more mastery of the sky. So we've got 40 ASFs on the field for Orond and more than a Jedi uh, interceptors. Click on the right thing, Guile. That would help. Has 13. So I don't know if there's been any significant air battles that we've missed. But Orond, one way or the other, currently ahead. And Carlitos needs to be a little careful here. Getting entangled with a bunch of rhinos, but he hasn't got that many hit points left on the commander. It's a two-star com. He's got 4,500 hit points. And he has managed to force Ryan into a little bit of a retreat. Everything left over here now is pretty much anti-air with the occasional mobile missile launcher thrown in for good measure. There are some rhinos coming in further behind. Carlitos with no T2 protection. All of his oblivion turrets back here have been destroyed. Needs to be a little bit careful. Will he heed me? I think not. Now we've got vessels coming in from Printer over on the right hand side. Printer who initially did inherit the beach base but he transferred that over to Ryan. Just not very comfortable about how aggressive he's playing this. We've seen comms get themselves in a lot of trouble. And he's got hostile vessels on both sides of the causeway. Some of which are Tech 2. Destroy is now opening up on the commander. He got himself a rank in veterancy which restored a huge chunk of HP. So he's on about 5,700 but now... The Rhinos are moving in for the kill. This is exactly what I was worried was going to happen. And watch the hit points evaporate. Boom, baby! There he goes. And then suddenly, Team 1 were ahead again. Less than ideal. For Gabba and Orond. Definitely felt like that was a little bit of an unnecessary death there. But team one, look at that. Up by 200 mass. Up a player. Things looking pretty darn good. Potentially about to grab dominance in the top pond. And maybe even in the bottom pond. Oh, and a saucy little drop into the southern cliffs. It's going to take out that T1 land factory, or not. Just take it down to 1,200 hit points. Oh, there is another volley inbound. That should do it, maybe. Oh, distracted by the fleeing engineer. Will that keep the factory alive? 700 hit points remaining. Quite possibly. Trying to head further inland now and see if they can pick off something vulnerable. Grass upgrade on the way for Printer. Gabba completed his upgrade, pulling in a very respectable 456 now. Jedi pulling in 421. Everybody else 300 or below. T2 torp bombers trying to target some of these Exodus class destroyers. But Oron wastes no time in bringing in the air superiority fighters and shooting those puppies down. And I think there's a bit of an ill-advised raid, to be honest. This is just throwing these frigates away. Wants to try and kill off as many engineers as possible to slow down production. I understand the impulse. I don't think it's going to have much of an effect. You can see how well he's emerged from... That encounter, there is one destroyer down here, which definitely deserves a good solid spanking. And not in a good way. Transport inbound with four more light artillery. What happened to that last group? It's been slaughtered somewhere over here, probably by those fighter bombers, those Janus. Oh no, Corsairs, excuse me.
me just have a look at what we've got here. Total DPS, 3,700. Mass cost, 27,000 in this little forward fleet. Gabba's units here, 3,500 with a mass cost of 21,000. So, fewer boats, more tech. Is the, uh, the highlight on that little budding encounter. Engineers spamming up. T2 point defences under forward shield coverage. Gabba now inheriting responsibility for everything which is not air. Both ponds, causeway. That is a hefty workload to be sure. New drop was successful. Four Lobos about to take down a T2 Mex. Very nicely done indeed. Doesn't want to get picked off though. Down to two Lobos. Used to get those on the move. Wow. Solid str uh, not strap bomber, sorry, torpedo bomber raid now being directed at Printer's naval base. And that's the T3 naval yard, which is currently working on a battle cruiser, if I'm not mistaken. But it's about to. Well, it's about. 80% done. But he's probably going to be able to take that down before it completes. One more bombing run should do it. Down to 5,000 hit points. But he's losing torpedo bombers. Oh, that's a lovely little kill. A lot of wasted mass there. Air superiority fighters tangle and Orond demonstrating his superiority in the air well and truly. More than the Jedi looking a little bit out of his league here. And would you believe it? Gabba has managed to win the bottom pond by the looks of things, sailing a fleet right up to the cliff edges now, and he's opening up on the main base. Printer currently working on shield coverage and... A strategic missile defense. What he really needs is shield coverage on this side. Because it's not going to take long before everything collapses. Printer absorbing fire. He's going to have to withdraw. Or suffer the ignominy of being the next player booted out of this game. But his main base, I think, is going to be wrecked. Has got one last chance to save things, but I don't think he's got enough vessels. Too much firepower over here. It's been a lovely little raid by Orond. The main T3 factory down. The assisting smaller tech, lower tech factories down. He's got four left over here, or five rather. There are still plenty of skimmers loitering in the airways. Eco-wise, Team 1 pulling away in serious fashion. 1.4 versus 9.03. And more than a Jedi pulling in 562 compared to Oron's 390. That is some serious macro he's doing. No wonder he's not faring so well in the air because he's spending everything on mass fabricators. Pulling in a serious quantity of mass. If he can hold on to it, it will serve him very well in the coming minutes. As long as he can get enough air production and keep it and have the time to build a sizable air force. Rond has been more aggressive with his plays. He has been building mass fabs, but in smaller quantities. Printer trying to make another push out over here. But I think Gabba might be alert to it. Or maybe he was just moving down here to finish off the side island. 
Either way, he needs to put these two installations to bed, really. And Orond very much helping in this bottom pond, seeing that that's the major threat. ASF's tangle once more, but I think once again Orond has superior numbers. Oh, that's a really horrible engage. Look at all those ASFs sitting around doing nothing. <clears throat> Let me try telly, said Ryan. Ugh. Ugh. Well, there he goes. He's working on his teleporter anyway. 55% and climbing. Nice little group of rhinos breaking through the outer perimeter on the causeway. There are some Ilshivas lying in wait in front of this base. And of course, we've got a bunch of point defense. But look at that. Throw a battleship into the mix. Why not? Printer well and truly scrubbed from the naval game in the bottom pond, I think. Restore is showing up, wanting to take down that last T3 reactor, which is just outside shield coverage. Down it goes. Printer leeching off his teammates for power now. Working on flak, trying to secure the skies so that he doesn't lose this core mass completely. But once... That side island is dead. Gabba's just going to park his boats all the way along that shoreline. And there will be no tenable presence here for Team 1. Look how well he's doing in both ponds now. He's going to water. So Ryan completes laser. Who was it who said he's going to water? Printer. So they're all coordinating together potentially for a telemazer. This could really throw a spanner in the works for Team 2, who are still behind on Eco. But the territorial side of things tells a very different story. And in fact, the sheer amount of weaponry tells a very different story. Team 1 has just been macroing a little too hard. I think that's not unfair to say. Novak Satellite en route now from Printer. Looking like it's heading over to Gabba. And he's made... Ryan has made his play. Gabba's on the move. Engineers are spamming together T1 point defense. That huge microwave laser zipping from left to the right. Oh, no, don't stop there. He's moved right into range of all of the T1 PDs. He wants to kill them all off. He thinks he can do it. He's close to a rank in veterancy. Oh, my God, he's so close. How did he not get that? That might have looked very amateurish. Like, on the face of it. But he was very, very close to getting a chunk of hit points back there. And if he had done... He could have cleared all of this out. Almost, he said. Yeah. He wasn't very close to getting Gabba's com, But he could have wiped out Gabba's base. Should have cancelled and re-teleported. Well, hindsight's a wonderful thing. But I don't actually think that was a terrible play. He was just very unlucky with the, the way it ended. But anyway, Ryan out. It's now a 2v2. And that's evened up. Or well, the latest patch to play has evened up the total somewhat. Team 2 now just 100 mass or so behind in generated eco. They're down about 320,000 mass overall, which is a huge deficit in total mass accrued. And for that to translate to this is just bizarre. Usually you would expect this team, with all of this map control, all of this weaponry, to be the one that's... So far ahead, 320,000 mass up. But nope, not the case. And if the game continues in this vein, all of that extra eco that Team 1 have been the beneficiaries of will count for absolutely nothing. Because this has all been a Ronde 
and Gabba right now. Three Galaxy class battleships in that top pond assaulting the naval yards at the beach here. Naval headquarters will not survive. Uh, this is not looking good for Team 1. They're about to lose the beach. We are seeing desperation plays now emerge as more than a Jedi is spamming out strap bombers looking for the snipe attempt. He's got Gabba's com covered from printer's Novax. He knows where it is. Currently circling overhead. Let's actually just see what, what they can see as those strap bombers move out into that top ocean. New ones being created all the time. So he knows that's where Gabba is. Does he have a bead on Orond? Yes, he does with the scrying tool and a spy plane or two. So this will be do or die because they've lost both oceans. They're behind overall in the air. All of the air force pretty much for Orond is guarding gunship attacks going against Printer now on the other side of the map. They've missed the inbound strats going straight for Gabba's com. Easy peasy. He is down and out. It is now all on Arond. Arond scrambles his defending fighters to cover the approach in towards his main base and his com. Uh, now there are some restorers in the air as well. We have one T2 shield gen. That capitulates. He's working on another, but that dies out. There's more strats coming in all the time, however. Oh, this is going to be very close. 4,000 hit points. 1,400 hit points. One bomb. It's gone wide, but it's enough. Wow. <laughs> That's why you never quit, says more than the Jedi. Yeah, I know, but you were up on eco by a lot. In one metric, you were never behind. You just didn't build enough units. But I think it's fair to say they were losing. They were losing hard. Look at that. Absolute domination. They were going to lose everything on this front line. And it just would have been about turtling up in here and trying to break out in the air game. Which, overall, they were behind. They were behind in the air game. Despite the fact that they just won with air. How many ASFs did we end the game on there? For Jedi. He had 71. And Orond had 95 with another 10 that were bingo on fuel. So uh, it wasn't that far behind. But then we had restorers. Or only how many? We had 20 restorers. Quite a few there. Any torpedo bombers? Oh, a bit redundant now anyway. Since both oceans were won. But fantastic game. Not a huge one for a sentence. Not an epic I did think that was a pretty epic play, but I mean, let's face it, it didn't have any game enders in. Much of the uh, the big weapons weren't brought to bear. We had no artillery. It was quite over quite quickly, so it didn't quite breach that epicosity level. If you have a good epic and want to see more, do send it my way, guys. Always happy to receive more replays. And uh, yeah, do check out the Patreon, guys. It's the best way to support me. It's a mere dollar a month. It gives you access to 100 premium content casts, all free from ads, with more coming all the time. I'm going to try and work on another one, I think, for tomorrow so we can get uh, back to normality with two casts out a week. I do one on the main channel and one on the premium channel. And that $1 a month also gets you access to Discord as well. Come and say hello to the little community over at Guilecast Premium. It's where the cool kids hang out. All right, guys, thanks for joining. Until next time, stay well and stay safe. This is Guile signing out.